Oh. No, it is on. Can you hear me? Morning. Morning. Welcome to worship this morning here at Celebration Lutheran Church as we gather together on this very, very special day to celebrate Confirmation Sunday. Um, always a special day uh, here in the life of the church as a, as, a, as a people of God, the body of Christ. And uh, Nathan and I were uh, chatting a little bit before worship how special always this is. And so this year actually um, we get two because we were just catching up from COVID. So we will affirm uh, the, the, the gift of grace given to uh, Jack on his baptism, and we'll celebrate that affirmation of faith today. So um, certainly a, a, good, a good day. Um, just a quick word about the service. It'll feel a little bit different, but mostly kind of follow. Uh, I don't think you'll feel too out of place. Um, you know us Lutherans, we got to stay in our stay in our liturgical lanes, but um, we will have a little bit of fun as we, um, as we celebrate uh, confirmation. Um, just a couple quick announcements. Um, everybody, congratulations, you made the correct time. We've transitioned to our nine o'clock summer schedule. I was out there at eight this morning and no one showed up, so I, you all are paying attention, so that's very good. Um, that's very good. So we'll now, we'll now be on this schedule. Just a reminder, uh, we will be on this uh, schedule through Labor Day. So just, just note that for, for our summer schedule. Um, I don't have any other major announcements other than page 16 of your bulletin. We're still looking for folks to help with worship. So please, uh, we put that out um, quite a bit this spring. Um, we are still in need throughout the summer. I know summer is a busy time, but um, if you feel led to help with worship, uh, we would appreciate that. Please um, scan those QR codes out in the narthex, or you can see that email that, that comes from Stacy in the weekly, the weekly calendar. That's kind of our announcement, electronic announcement, so please see that. Um, again, welcome. We're glad you are here. Welcome to folks uh, gathering with us online. Uh, we are glad you are here too, and believe your presence is a part of this worship, even if it's online, so welcome. Um, are there any prayers that we can lift up this morning? Any prayers that can be a part of worship? Yes, Jesse. Paul's mother is Gail, correct? Yeah. No, that's okay. Actually, yes, Pastor Paul and I both have the same, our parents have the same name, which is just kind of funny, another random, random thing. But we will pray for Gail as well. Yeah. Any other prayers this morning? Yes, Brian. Prayers for Paul and Miranda. Amen. I saw another hand. Nathan? That's great news. Got to feel good. To, no place like getting home after being in the hospital. Any other prayers this morning? Any other? Yes, Lindsay. Prayers for Jason and Jen. Yeah. 
Any other prayers this morning? Any other prayers? It's good to be gathered together. It's good to be the body of Christ on this day. We'll take just a brief moment to quiet our hearts before we begin worship. Let the congregation of please stand. We begin this morning with the thanksgiving of baptism. In the waters of our baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are now a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing from your throne through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. And you rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites, and now in these waters you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm the troubled waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out in lush and barren places. You are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon the waters and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts. And wipe away every tear. To you our beginning and our end. Our shepherd and lamb. Be honor and glory. Praise and thanksgiving. Now and forever. Amen. Invite the congregation to join in our gathering hymn. Lord I lift your name on high. We'll sing through twice. Hymn number 857. Let us pray together our prayer of the day. Gracious God, we praise you for calling us to faith, for gathering us into your church, the body of Christ. We thank you for your people gathered in this place and rejoice that you have increased our community of faith. Together, may we live in the Spirit, building one another up in love, sharing in the life and worship of the church, and serving the world for the sake of Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Invite the congregation and please be seated. The first reading comes from Romans chapter 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Here ends the reading. A reading for Confirmation Sunday. Ephesians 4, 9 through 6. Is it not true that one who climbed up also climbed down, down to the valley of earth? And the one who climbed down is the one who climbed back up, up to the highest heaven? He handed out gifts above and below, filled heaven with his gifts, filled earth with his gifts. He handed out gifts of apostle, prophet, evangelist, and pastor, teacher, to train Christ's followers in skilled servant work, working within Christ's body, the church, until we're all moving rhythmically and easily with each other, efficient and graceful in response to God's Son, fully mature adults, fully developed within and without, fully alive in Christ. Here ends our reading. And now I'm going to get us set up, but I am kind of excited because... I have always, I was telling Pastor this morning, I love any chance to get to talk about our youth, um, to get to brag about them, and that's no different with Jack. Um, I love to brag about you, Jack, whether you believe it or not. But <laughs> um, I'm excited we're here. Um, I'm excited to say, Jack, you did it. You had kind of a fun, fun couple of years, um, some crazy things going on. But it's been amazing to see where you've come from the beginning of confirmation to now, and I would love to speak um, to the congregation about that and to you. Um, I want to start with a little bit of a, a fun story from confirmation. Um, if you were in our class, you might see that at times, and Mike can attest to that because he's, he's upstairs and hears our conversations, sometimes it goes off of the topic that we're on. Um, that can happen, and I try really hard to get, yeah, Jack's going, yep. Um, sometimes I try hard to get it back on, and I will admit even sometimes I'm the one that gets off topic. Especially there's been times where Jack tries to start talking about Marvel because he knows it'll get me really off topic, but I'm like, nope, we're not going there. Um, <laughs> but what was kind of, why I bring that up and what's kind of fun about that is we would get down these rabbit holes, we'd get down these big conversations, and all of a sudden out of nowhere, Jack one day just at the top of his lungs looked at us and said, back to Jesus. <laughs> and I love that so much it became a motto of our class, and it worked. It absolutely worked. We got back to Jesus, and that kind of made me think about what confirmation is, like back to Jesus. That's what confirmation is about. It's about affirming our faith. It's about coming to Christ and being alive in Christ, as our reading says, and that's something I've seen Jack do that I absolutely love. Like, yes, that was a joke right? But I know that's something that you truly feel. You want to, to learn about God. When you came to confirmation, I could see that you were wanting to learn and to form what God means in your life. And we spent that time to learn what God means to you, what God means in your life, what it means to others, and how you can form your own opinions, and how you can bring it back to God, how you can bring it back to Christ, and how you can do that for others. It's so amazing to see how you were with Freya in our class this year, and, and together you learning and wanting to help her and you and her helping you and all those and all the above. And I love when you come up to me after Sunday or during passing of the peace and you say, hey, I got a question about this. Like, 
that is so great to see that you are affirming. You are coming back to Jesus. You are going back to Jesus constantly, and that's so great to see. These past couple years have just been great to see what you have done and where you have come, and I'm so excited to see where you're going to be, where you're going to go. Because that's the other fun thing that we talk about all the time in confirmation. It's not just, you're done with confirmation, now you've got everything figured out, right? It's more about, there's going to be times where we're not back to Jesus, where we are far from it. And now you have, and before, but now you see through confirmation, you have a gigantic support group, and you have God to be there in your life and living in you to share what you know and what you, who you are and those gifts that God has given you that you can share with others. And a gift that I've seen in you that I have always cherished and always makes me feel really just proud, honestly, is that you are always there to see others do well. You want to see others succeed. And I think in turn that is so great to see because you want to be with them on their walk, on their journey. And I've seen that in confirmation. And you want to share God's love with others through that. And I think in turn, by you doing those things for others, you have found a place where you have purpose, where you are fulfilled, where you know what gifts you have been given. And I see that seeing other people succeed and do well helps you succeed and do well. And that's so incredible to see. And so fulfilling for me, and I'm sure everyone, to see where you've come, especially in confirmation, but just in who you are. And that's something, never let go of that, Jack. Never, ever let go of being there for others, because I know that's something you do naturally, and, I, and I, I love it. It's incredible to see. So confirmation is about affirming faith. Confirmation is about being in Christ with your church, with your friends, with your faith, with your community. And you're learning all those things, and you have that great gift to be with others, to boost them up, to hold them up when they're having a hard time. When you're having a disagreement, when there's something that you maybe have a difference with someone else, I still see even in that, you don't shoot people down. You build them up. You say, how can we work on this together? How can we build this? It's so great to see all these wonderful things you have done, and I can't wait to see all the wonderful things you will be doing. Um, I will always appreciate your insight, your, your thought-provoking questions, your deep questions. And believe it or not, I'm even going to appreciate the short and bald joke. But <laughs> I will always appreciate the short and bald joke. <laughs> but the thing is, Jack, it <laughs> from everyone, I get them a lot. So, okay. <laughs> but Jack loves the short and bald jokes, and they're, they're, sometimes they're really good. You slowed down a little bit, but it, it, I don't care. I love it. Okay. But, <laughs> but the thing is, in confirmation, in affirming your faith, in being here, God has heard you. God has given you these gifts of lifting others up and being with others. God is here to share that with you so you can share that with God's people, with all of us. God hears your voice and rejoices in the promise you made today, that you make today. Never forget, forget Jack, that God is with you. God cares for you and has shared with you this world and wants you to share that with others. And also... Back to Jesus. Thank you and amen. Thank you. Thanks, Nathan. Yeah, we appreciate, appreciate you in this process, too, and your gifts of love and affirmation and... Um, we're grateful for your presence in, in the lives of our young people. So thank you, Nathan. And, and what a, a powerful witness of um, back to Jesus. I, I think that's kind of fitting um, for, for confirmation in COVID, where it sort of was extended and started and stopped a couple times. And, and, and what a powerful reminder for all of us who have at one point um, had to affirm our faith, to say yes, and to, to return to to our faith, to return to Jesus. So we give thanks for, for, for the ministry of, of confirmation. We'll uh, continue this morning. Uh, uh, we'll pick back up in page five 
of your bulletins with the rite of confirmation. And so we begin with a prayer. And I invite you to follow along and pray with me. Gracious God, merciful God, we thank you for this child of God whom you have made your own by water and word in the act and spirit of baptism. You have called him to yourself, enlightened him with the gifts of your grace, your spirit, and nourished him in this community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all, all of whom you have brought to new birth, to new life. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. And now this part uh, requires both participation from Jack and the congregation. So I now ask Jack and Celebration together to reject sin and all that draws us away from God. Do you renounce all evil influences and powers that rebel against God? I renounce them. And now I ask Jack to come forward and face the congregation. People of God, do you promise to support this? I got thrown here. Okay, we got a microphone. Okay, people of God, let me begin again. People of God, do you promise to support this beloved child of God, Jack, to whom we pray for him in his life in Christ. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. And now, Jack, we, we call for you to look into your heart and please affirm your faith. Jack, do you believe in God the Father? I believe God in the Father. I believe God the Father is the maker of the universe and of all living things. God loves creation and all of us unconditionally. And do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe Jesus Christ is my Savior, and in Jesus Christ who lived and died and rose again has revealed God's love for all. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe the Holy Spirit comes upon us in our baptism and works in us every day. The Spirit is always leading and guiding us. Do you believe, what do you believe about God's Word and the Holy Sacrament? I believe the Bible is the living Word of God and teaches, uh, teaches about God's love and forgiveness. I affirm Holy Communion and Baptism as sacraments because they nourish our faith with God's grace. Those who are baptized are called to worship God and serve one another. From the very beginning, believers have continued in the teaching, the fellowship of disciples and apostles, in worship and sacrament, service and prayer. Will you commit yourself to this life? I will with God's help. Will you forgive others as you are forgiven? I will with God's help. Will you seek to love your neighbor as yourself and strive for peace and justice? I will with God's help. Will you accept the cost of following Jesus Christ in your daily life and work? I will with God's help. And with the whole church, will you proclaim by word and action the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Jack's Confirmation Verse, 1 Thessalonians 5.11, Therefore encourage one another and build up each other as indeed you are doing. I chose this verse because I love to cheer on others even when I fail. Everyone fails a lot, but not everyone cheers on the people around them when they fail. I have discovered through confirmation that I am closest to God not only when I succeed, but as much when others around me succeed. Jack, I'll now invite you to kneel here. I'll invite his uh, close family to come forward. I'll invite you to uh, lay your hands on him as we pray over him. Gracious God, Father in heaven, for Christ's sake, stir up in Jack the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith this day, guide his life always, and empower him in his serving. Give him patience and suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Jack, I now invite you to stand and face the congregation. Let us rejoice with this child of God in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Let us celebrate Jack's confirmation, the affirmation of his baptism.
And now invite the congregation to stand and join in our hymn of the day, Born in Cry, hymn number 732. Please stand and sing. We continue with our prayers. Each petition will conclude with God of grace. Congregation is invited to pray. Hear our prayer. Let us pray together. Gracious God, one God, giver of all life, you have established peace through your Son and have given your church the hope of, of sharing in your glory. Enliven us by your Spirit to act in love for the sake of the world. Loving Redeemer, you delight in the human race, in all people. Make the hearts of the world leaders seek that wisdom. To speak truth and care for all endangered by poverty, prejudice, violence, bias, hate. Gracious God, further the work of diplomacy, collaboration, of peacemaking. God of grace, hear our prayer. And creator of all, you rejoice in creation and have given humankind responsibility for the works of your hand. Instill in everyone your spirit of care for the earth, especially in areas threatened by devastation and drought or flooding or misuse and mistreatment. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, comfort all who live in constant fear. Any who are suffering this day, may your spirit remind us that all are your children and that we are never far from, from that grace and that peace. Gracious God, heal those who are ill this day. Uphold all who cry out to you, especially this day we pray for Gail, who has a broken hip. We pray for a speedy recovery, a relief from pain, a hope of renewed health. Increase in bodily strength. May she return home safely. Gracious God, we also pray for Jason and Jen, who both are battling cancer. Touch their wounds this day. Restore them to the wholeness of life. Gracious God, we also pray for Miranda, who is near death. For Paul, too. 
May they trust that nothing can separate us from, from your love. That no matter what happens in this life, you, you always love us. And gracious God, we also know that um, it's that time of year where school is coming to an end. We give thanks for another school year, for, for learning, for knowledge, for relationships, for teachers who, who give their all. Be with them as they look forward to some rest and renewal this summer, but we also pray for our kids too. We certainly get to enjoy summer weather, time with friends and family, but, but gracious God, we also know that many do not get to share in that. Many are looking for safety, for food, to have their basic needs met. We pray for those this day, those who are in need. Be with them. Surround them this day. Gracious God, we also lift up prayers of thanksgiving for Aunt Penny, for finally the strength and the goodwill to go home. We trust that you will continue to walk with her this day, and we trust that your grace and mercies are new every day. God of grace, hear our prayer. And gracious God, finally, we pray for this church. We give thanks for another, another confirmation season. We give thanks for young people, their families, their commitment to, to raise them in the church, to build up faith, to build them up in spirit and emotion and in body. Gracious God, may we continue to do this work, to raise the next generation in faith. God of grace, hear our prayer. And in your mercy, gracious God, respond to these prayers. Hear our prayers. Receive them this day and renew us by your life-giving spirit. We pray this through Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share Christ's peace with one another. And
We continue this morning uh, with our offering prayer, page 11 of your bulletins. Let us pray together. Gracious God, you bless us with gifts of guidance, of new life, of growth and grace, and of fruitful labor. Accept the first fruits of time and toil, stewardship and generosity that we offer here. Bless and multiply these gifts to our nurture and care of your creation. For the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord who is our God. It is right to give our thanks and our praise. And it is indeed right, our duty and our great joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, that through our Savior Jesus Christ, fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your Spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with creation, earth and sea and all their creatures, with the angels, archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your holy name. We join their unending hymn. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you. You are the creator of heaven and earth. You rescued your people. You led them all on their journeys and taught them by prophets. You love the world so that you gave your son. So that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. And in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread. He blessed it and he gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given and broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he blessed it, then he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup, it's part of the new covenant in my blood, and it's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And with this bread and cup, we remember your son, the firstborn of your new creation. We remember his life lived for, for others, for the world, his death and resurrection, which renews the face of the earth. We await his coming again, when... With the world made perfect through your wisdom, all our sins and sorrows will be no more. We pray this through all glory and honor that is yours, O living one, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. My friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, be fed with a meal of God's love and grace for your lives. Come, the table is ready. All are welcome.
invite the congregation to please stand as you are comfortable and able as we conclude our worship this morning. We continue on page 14 with this blessing. Receive this blessing. May these precious gifts of Christ's body and blood strengthen you and keep you in God's grace this day. Amen. Let us pray together. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. In celebration, receive this final blessing, the benediction. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. And the Lord look upon you with favor and bring you deep peace this day. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Invite, invite the congregation to join in our closing hymn this Confirmation Sunday. Shout to the Lord. Hymn number 821. My friends, we're reminded another year of confirmation, another year of two years, really. It's not just one year. Two years of, of relationships, of learning, of growing together, and we give thanks. We give thanks. And we're reminded back to Jesus. Back to Jesus. So go in peace this day. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. God bless you all.